Alyssa Springs, Florida, and we're hunting for some Elisomoga birch and rye. These are a beautiful little native fish down here in the panhandle of Florida that I want to try to get some more of to be able to spawn and then be able to distribute to more people that are looking for fish that go into nano fish tanks. Because these fish only get to about an inch and a half long and they are just stunning inside of a planted tank. And so that's what we're here today is try to get some more as well as see what else is here at Wakista Springs. Before we get, I want to show you guys how warm it is here. So the water temperature right now is 74 and anywhere that you look in here, is staying about 73, 74. And uh, when I was here the other day, talking with some other guys from Gainesville, Florida, they said that the Ellis Loma River is actually staying in that general area out there. And it's a little bit cooler down there. So you could even run it a little bit cooler, but that's, this is the heat of summer right now. It's August 29th, 30th. And this is as hot as it's going to get. And they're topping out at 74 degrees, just to give you an idea of what they look like in their native environment. So we're out here now in the actual water. We can see uh, it's heavily vegetated in here. There's a lot of uh, valcinaria over here to my right, along with anacharis and some other plant that I'm blanking on the name right now. But this is where you will find Elisoma gobertari if you are collecting them out in Florida or in their native habitat. You're gonna look for heavily vegetated areas that they're gonna be residing in. I'll show you guys how I'm actually catching them with my dip net here. Uh, I was going to consider using a uh, line with hook, uh, but that was just going to be a little too challenging, I think, given the situation here with all of the, the plants. So let's go in and see if we can't get a good male on this dip here. So we're going to come up through, we're going to go down to the bottom and scrape along the bottom there, because that's where they're going to be hiding. And we'll see if we have any in here. So we have a couple of juveniles in here. I don't know if you can see them at the bottom of the net right there. A couple juveniles there, but let's see if we can't uh, get a good sized male here. I'll show you guys one when I have one. So here is a pretty well-developed male. You can see the blue coloration in him, some of that coloration in his fins, and he is just a gorgeous little specimen right there. And that's exactly what we're looking for. And once we get him home into an aquarium, he'll probably end up looking like this which is just crazy to think that it will go from that to this pretty quickly once we get him into an aquarium and he's more settled in. And you can see a little shrimp next to him actually. So yeah, uh, let's see if we can't see any smaller ones. I know that I have some here in this net. So here's a little smaller guy here. You can just barely make him out. Oh, he just ducked into the net. Oh, buggered, where'd you go? You saw him there for a brief moment. Let's see if we have any other ones in there. So there's a, a female or a undeveloped male right there. You can still see that blue just barely coming through and it'll look great in the future. So here are all of the ones that I caught today and these probably aren't even a quarter of everything that I caught. I threw back a lot of them and uh, we're going to get these into bags and we'll get them home to Kentucky and we'll see how many we have after that trip. And hopefully we can start breeding these guys as our next breeding project. So I have a good mix of juveniles, males, females in here. So I'm really looking forward to seeing if we can't start breeding these guys in some large numbers and seeing what we can do with it. Hope you guys have a blessed day. See you guys in the next one. See ya.